Okay, this video is um, going to pretty much cover the main ideas of seventh grade. All right, ratios and percent are really what this year has been about. Um, in sixth grade, you have a really good foundation to it. And then in seventh grade, um, we really start seeing, especially these percents with ratios. Okay, so I'm going to start out with a um, pretty simple question. Um, when you have a ratio, what is a ratio? Well, all a ratio is is a comparison of two numbers, okay? So you learned last year that you have part to whole ratios, okay? Those are what fractions that we know and love, right? You learn those in elementary school. They don't tell you, hey, here's a ratio. They tell you, hey, it's a fraction. It's a part to whole. So example, like there's five girls out of 10 total students. Well, that's a part to whole ratio. You learn that there are part to part ratios as well when you get to sixth grade. And then you can also have whole to part ratios. But no matter what, I want you to recognize that ratios are comparing two different things. Okay? When we take two ratios and we say, well, I have two equal ratios, that is a proportion. And we've seen proportions in similar figures. Um, we see proportions with percent all the time. Um, we can see proportions when we make predictions, like you make five baskets in a game. How many baskets would you expect to make in ten games? Um, proportions allow us to do all those kind of things. So these are a really, really useful math tool. I know I told you guys that when I take the SATs or when I took really um, difficult tests, sometimes you can figure out a way to use a proportion on questions you have no clue how to solve. And this little tool will help you solve a lot of questions when you're having to make predictions, comparisons. Um, really neat tool. But it's basically just two equal ratios. Okay? So I'm going to start not even talking about percent. Um, sometimes it's difficult to recognize when you have a word problem, when do you have a proportion? It's not always going to be as easy as you shoot five or you make five baskets in 10 games how many baskets in 12 games okay sometimes it's going to be a little more complicated have some extra information in it so let me show you this example notice there's no percent so we need to recognize we're going to use a ratio okay or a proportion to make six glasses of lemonade carla uses half a cup of sugar half a cup of lemon juice and five and a half cups of water if carla wants to make 10 glasses of lemonade which proportion can she use to determine how many cups of water will she need? All right? We're not even going to look at the answer choices. I really just want to focus on the question here. Okay? First thing you need to figure out is you are trying to make a prediction. Okay? We want to know we have lemonade, how many glasses of lemonade, and how much water. You're comparing those two things. Okay? In order to figure out how much water you need for 10 glasses of lemonade, I have to tell you the relationship between how many cups of water you need in a certain number of glasses. So if you look here, your given ratio, or what it tells you, is for six glasses of lemonade. Notice I don't care about the sugar. I don't care about the lemon juice. I care about the water. Because my question says, if you had 10 glasses, how many cups of water? So this is my given ratio. And if you can recognize that this is a given ratio, I'm going to write that as my first ratio. So six glasses of lemonade. So I'll just put glasses of lemonade. And I used five and a half cups of water. And I'm going to write that as a decimal. You could leave it as a fraction, but I'm going to leave that as five and a half cups of water. This is my given ratio. Okay? The problem doesn't say, I am telling you, there's six glasses and this is your given ratio. You have to problem solve and figure that out, okay? This is your given ratio. It says now that there are 10 glasses, how many cups of water? And notice, if this is glasses to water, this needs to be glasses to water. That is how we always set up proportions in this class, okay? So, in order to solve that, I could do cross product, 6x equals 10 times 5 and a half, um, and I could find my answer. I'm not so concerned in this problem um, how to find the answer just for this example. I do want to look at the answer choices, though. I have 6 over 5 and a half equals 10 over x, or 10 over, in this case, they use w. 
So here is my answer choice. If that wasn't there, I know for a fact 6 will be diagonal from x or across from x. 5 and a half will be diagonal from 10. So I could look at this proportion and know that that's incorrect. 6 must be across from my variable. Well, that's not true in this one. I could look at this one and say, well, is this proportion true? Absolutely. 5 and a half is diagonal from 10. 6 is diagonal from x. So even though these look different, I know that's another way I could write the proportion. Okay? If you can write it one way, though, guys, that's all you need to know. And you can figure out which ones work. Okay, so that is an example without any percent. Now I'm going to take you to where we have percent questions. So whenever you see a question with percent, you can safely assume or at least have a really good idea you're going to be using your percent proportion. Okay, so in order to have your percent proportion, this is what we've been using all year. You have your part over whole, or that would be like your total, right? It's your part to whole ratio. Oh my goodness, it's a fraction. Equals your percent over 100. And we talked about how percent means per 100. There's 100 cents in a dollar. A century is 100 years. 100 per cent literally means something per 100. Okay, so this is the equation or the formula that you would use. No, it is not on your reference chart, but that is your formula. So if I say that, I'm going to go back to the example of boys and girls in the class. There are five girls out of ten total students. What percent are girls? Well, I don't know the percent, but I know it's always over 100. I'm sure you can figure that out in your head, but we would do this. Um, you could do 5 times 100 is 500, divided by 10 will give you 50%, or you could just recognize, I mean, that's half the class, so 50%, okay? This is one you need to memorize. It is not on your reference chart. We are going to practice in class of writing it onto our reference chart, but that is something that you need to be very, very comfortable with um, setting up. For the most part, we're very, very good at this. Okay, um, another example could be, and if you watch the graphing video on circle graphs, you'll see this used a lot. Let's say that I know 25% of my class um, has an A. So let's say that 25% of Miss McKinney's math class has an A in her class right now. And if I have a total of 30 students in that class, how many have an A? So I don't know how many have an A, but I know the whole is, three, is 30. That's the total and I know 25%. So again, you do the same thing and solve it, okay? Pretty straightforward. The only other type that you might see too um, in this example would be tax. Um, so a lot of times we need to remember that part is the tax, okay? There are other ways to do this, but I'm gonna stick to this proportion in this video, okay? Let's say you wanna buy some new Nikes, okay? They cost, so Nike's cost, I'm going to say 200 bucks. Those are some expensive shoes. I would never spend that, but $200 for Nike's, okay? So that is the total. And I'm going to tell you the, ta the tax rate is, uh, da, 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 da. let's say 8%. That is a ridiculously high tax rate, just so you know. Um, but let's just use that for this example. A lot of times you'd see this as like decimal 0, 0.8 or 8 hundredths of a percent. For this example, I'm going to use 8%. Okay? And I want to know how much will I have to pay? How much is the total? Well, we need to find the tax. We need to see how much money, I know it's 8%, how much money am I going to have to pay in tax on those sneakers? And then I can add that tax to my original amount, 200 bucks, to figure it out. All right? We're going to use this same equation, but I'm going to say, okay, the whole is your cost of these Nikes, the beginning cost. That sneaker is, those tennis shoes are 200 bucks. That's the total or the whole. I don't know how much I'm going to pay in tax. That's the part. I do know that it's an 8% tax rate. Okay, so you can solve this, you can do cross products, you can do divided by two. You're going to find that you're going to pay $4 in tax. Is that my final answer? 
Absolutely not. I want to know how much is the total. So you're telling me if you think four is your final answer, you wanted to go buy $200 shoes and you end up paying four bucks. No. You're paying four dollars in tax in this example. So if the shoes cost 200 and the tax is four dollars, I need to add that tax to how much those shoes cost and I get 204 bucks. Okay? So when you see tax questions, guys, it's just one little extra step. Okay? You can calculate for the tax and you need to know the part is the tax. Okay? And then you're going to have to add that to your original amount. So if my tax, I had to pay $3 in tax, I'm going to add that to however much my cost is. Okay? To be successful in these questions, you need to know that tax is the part and that the whole is the original amount of those shoes or whatever you're buying. Okay? And that's going to give you the original amount. Okay? The only other kind of percent questions that you will see a lot of are your percent change. So that's where you have, um, you might say, what is the percent change? What is the percent increase? What is the percent decrease? Anytime something is changing and we want to know the percent, okay, I'm going to remind you, this was our original percent proportion. Part over whole equals percent over 100. Whenever you have a percent change, it's, very similar to this, but in this case, it's still going to be a proportion. I have my percent over 100, but in this case, the whole is going to be the original amount, right? The whole amount I'm paying at the beginning. The part is going to be the difference or the amount that it's changed. Sometimes you'll see this delta for change, okay? So difference, I'm going to put difference. Difference over original, okay? This is also one you want to memorize, but I want you to notice it's not completely separate, right? This percent over 100 is the same. The whole is the original, and the part is the amount that it's changed, okay? So, for example, let's go back to those sneakers. Let's say they're $200 normally, right? But they're on sale. So you only have to pay 150 bucks. It's a pretty good sale. And I want to know what is the percent decrease or change in that price. Well, because it's asking for percent decrease, I'm going to use this percent proportion. Difference over original equals percent over 100. Okay? So for the percent, I don't know the percent change. That is my X but I know it's over 100 because it's percent, all right? I know the original amount was $200 for those Nikes, and I know that they're on sale for 150 Be very careful. This is the difference, not the new price. It's not 150 What was the difference from 200 and it dropped to 150 Well, if you can't do that in your head, because sometimes these numbers will get more complicated, to find the difference, we subtract, right? Mm -hmm. I found that the price dropped $50, or the difference was $50. You can even put the little sign to remind you what that means. Okay, so to find the percent decrease, you solve like normal. So um, I could do cross products, or I could see very easily, oh, this is just divided by 2. So divided by 2, that is a 25% decrease. We talked about what all that means in class, but you seem to be very comfortable using this formula. Okay, um, the key here, and I, it's the common mistake every time, you will want to put 150 here. This is your difference. It's not the new amount. It's the amount that it has changed. Okay, it takes practice with that, um, but those are your proportions. So part over whole equals percent over 100, or difference over original equals percent over 100. Or if there's not even a percent, you'll use just these ratios. You have your given ratio equals um, you can make a prediction with it. Okay, so that concludes our ratios and percent video.